Hello everybody, welcome to the 33rd episode of the Chicken Chess Club podcast. My name is Jan Gustafsson. I'm delighted to be healthy and I think I'm the only one. My dear friends, Grandmasters Laurent Fressinet and Peter Heinelson, both seem sick. Laurent, what do you have? What did you catch on your travels around the world? Yeah, I think I caught, I, I was tested negative on, on COVID, but I, I got a sales flu for the last four or five days. So I was just uh, isolating myself, watching football, sleeping, and that's about it. So that was, uh, and I was still, I'm still a bit tired. I was incredibly tired. So yeah, it, it's been, been tough, but now I feel, I already feel better. I'm looking forward to... To comment with you soon, Jan, my dear friend, will comment this pitch chess. Look at some chess; it will be it will be nice. My oh yeah, that's going to be incredibly exciting. It will be on Tuesday, so we we are just publishing on Wednesday. So I'm making this announcement for nothing, but uh, yeah, it will also be on Thursday. Uh, yeah, and Wednesday as well. We are comment commenting every day together. Wow. I can't wait. So, so your routine yeah. is the same as always when you're in Paris, except no <laughs> poker club at night. Yeah. And no Sleeping, bath. Sleeping, watching football. No drinking. No, no <laughs> drinking. And actually, uh, I sometimes walk uh, when I'm in Paris, but this time, uh, zero. Do you like, say walk uh, or work? Because they both sound unlike it. <laughs> um, both, actually. Uh, work. Work. Uh, work. Uh, so, but no, I did. I did nothing, and uh, yeah, no, that was not uh, a good week uh, for me. What about Tinder? Ah. <laughs> no, 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 same, same. Uh, everything. No, only, only soccer. Only, only Mbappé. Oh, Mbappé oh, is. Uh, He's uh, cheering me up, uh, which is which is good. Uh, always something ha happening with uh, with Mbappe, so that's good. All right, uh, sorry to hear that. I hope you get better. It's good to know you followed chess closely the last week, so we'll have a lot to talk about at least. Peter Peter Heide Nielsen is also here with us. We don't know where he is in Denmark. Peter is always in some yeah fresh location where they have a golf course. I'm actually sitting in my childhood home, uh, so um, I'm back in Holstebro in, in, in Denmark, yes. But, uh, well, I was like Luang, I'm also had some illness, basically. It's just very cold in, in, in Lithuania, and we try not to have the temperature too high inside as well for us due to the geopolitical situation. So um, I've caught, caught a bit here and there, but uh, not enough to stop me from being out there. Uh, in the morning at nine o'clock and play golf in the, in the cold here in Denmark. Actually. So um, basically, well, I'm in Denmark. I'm doing this, uh, this good feed, a trick that uh, you do one event for free, then they cover all your expenses for traveling. And then you try to put in a bunch of gig the, the, around the, the week. So if we're advertising stuff uh, on Wednesday evening, if you're in Copenhagen, you can uh, pay a lot of money. You get to hear me talk uninterrupted and you get to have dinner at the same time. And uh, well, That is um, one thing I will also be, be be doing. But generally, a bunch of social activity. Tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow evening, I'm having dinner with some Danish chess guys. We're basically going to eat junk food and uh, trash talk the Danish Chess Federation. I mean, with you guys, I trash talk feed, but I have sort of different uh, social groups where I trash talk various chess federations. So um, you know, and the feed. That's, that's what makes your your strong opinions, your moral values. So exactly. believable that we exactly. know he also had these other hobbies. <laughs> exactly. So I, I do like that. And then, uh, but, but Thursday, actually, I'm going to, uh, uh, well, there is a chess in schools competition where one school win wins a visit uh, from me. So I have to go there and, uh, you know, talk about my life, how I work. I have to play a symbol. I have to play blindfold chess. I have to play some hand uh, brain thing. I have to give a chess lecture, basically everything for the kids. There. And that's, I mean, Does it being, interfere with your golfing schedule? That sounds rough. Yeah, School actually, I'm, not, I'm I'm only golfing once in Denmark. Yes, yeah. so uh, basically, yes. So, but to be honest, uh, these things with the kids are basically incredibly fun. I have always enjoyed it in the in the past. So, um, believe believe it or not, I'm really looking forward to that. And then um, some family dinners. So basically, while in in in, in Lithuania, I have uh, basically zero social life. Here in Denmark, I try to have uh, free appointments a day so basically yeah wow. it's, uh, it's crazy 
Oh, it includes my mother, if you, if I count like that. But basically, three three appointments a day. So that that I'm looking a lot forward to. So very busy schedule these days. But I mean, I do manage to play some correspondence chess and follow chess events. Oh, so on. unlike Laurent, I have yeah. a b- bunch of stuff to talk about. Don't worry. Laurent, do you want to go on Wednesday? We go to Copenhagen. We we travel there. We hear Peter's speech uninterrupted for an hour. I, I'm, I must admit, you look very happy, and uh, you look the, the, happy, the happiest of uh, all of us. And uh, is that your uh, trip to upcoming trip to Sijes? I'm Which looking forward to that. Happy. I hope the weather is good. But yeah, I have like a week to go, and I need some sun. I'm really not built for German winters, which is also a topic every episode. But you, you understood. Did Dodgy fool you? Uh, fool you and uh, told you that uh, CJS was in Thailand, or how does that work? No, that is that's where I grew up. It's next to my Catalan village. Yeah. This okay, is so this is so my my backyard. <laughs> yeah. No, it will be nice. It will be nice. I went to suggest and it was, uh, I went to suggest during summer, which is amazing. And during winter, I mean, the w- winter are, are better than, than, in, than in Hamburg. I can testify, actually. Uh, I tied both, I mean, for a few days, but uh, still. Yeah, what is there to say? It is what it is. This is, of course, a chess podcast because as if you're still <laughs> listening, you might have heard, our lives really aren't that exciting. Yeah, sitting at home. <laughs> um, what happened in chess? The prestigious Mr. Dodgy Invitational 3 was won by Magnus Carlsen. Congratulations. I mean, he was, uh, he was very impressive. He won his first match. Uh, okay, of course, he qualified. Uh, so it was like two groups of uh, 16 players uh, where I failed. Uh, to qualify actually uh, and top 8 would qualify and then he beat Sevian I think 7-0 and he then won? he got he got. A, I think he won two matches 7-0 right or only one I think only one maybe only one you're right and against Shevchenko actually it was uh, the toughest uh, mm-hmm. it was 4-4 at some point okay at the end he won I think 7-4 but uh, I was watching this live uh, with your great commentaries uh, Jan thank you uh, thank you uh, and uh, yeah, he won. He won in the end. But you, you probably know better what was. Um, and I have a question for you, uh, Jan, because I saw on Twitter that Gitchu complained about the five minutes, uh, no increment, uh, time controlled. So did you tell him that he was uh, just uh, old and grumpy, uh, 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 as you told me last week? Pretty much. Um, I was surprised to hear that because Gitchu, he's been such an advocate for blitz and fast time controls. And he must have grown up with 5-0 as well. But yeah, a lot of feedback from the players seem to be, this is fun, but we can't control it. So in the end, there were so many time scrambles where these guys are amazingly good with like four seconds versus three seconds. They can produce like 15 decent moves. But so many games came down to the wire, which I found strange because five minutes is not that little time and everybody's used to playing three minute games and bullet games. But maybe it's it's just a question of practice because you really don't have to spend all your time. But Magnus, as usual, was dominant as Dubov put it who lost him in the finals. He said, yeah, you can either play slowly and try to hang in there on the chessboard or you can play quickly and get crushed on the chessboard. And yeah, he's just... He's just better and was an impressive performance. Shevchenko was amazing. He won, I think, three games in a row against Magnus and played some some really cool chess there. But in the end, also that match wasn't close. Well, every other, Zdubov Grishuk was a fun semi-finals. Um, but th- there were some hard-fought matches. It was entertaining. I had a good time. But I'm not sure it will go down in chess history as the most important. Mr. Dodge Invitational. Peter didn't play. Then, I don't know. The Geary didn't, didn't win. Play. A lot of things went wrong. But yeah, um, it's. I, I thought it was an exciting, exciting event, actually. Also, well, I think um, Mamedov came back uh, against Dubov, two points behind. The two games he must had to win, he did it. And then Dubov beat him in Armageddon, if I remember correctly, right? I mean, uh, remember uh, correctly. Yeah, there was a lot of interesting stuff. And, uh, well, Magnus seemed in, in good shape. Uh, and, um, 
No, that was also good to see, at least, uh, well, if you work for him, but I guess also for spectators. spectators. Yeah, no, I think he, he, yeah, he, he was playing well. But for me, it's interesting what you say about the time control. I agree, actually, that five minutes is a lot of time. And actually, I'm playing sometimes uh, online three minutes game, but... I mean, I cannot take uh, I cannot take it as easy. I mean, if, even if I don't care that much, you know, in this qualifier, but I'm just much uh, slower when it counts. I mean, when it's uh, some official tournament. I mean, just yeah, it's difficult just to play some random move, which I do when I play randomly online. But there, I couldn't. I was much slower. I Sorry to hear. Uh, no, for Grishuk, it was it was rough. He's pretty fast, but he lost so many games with like one second for Dubov, I think, and him being flagged. That yeah, of course, that could tilt things a little bit. But it's fun, like these uh, three plus two events. No one ever loses. I don't understand what's not to like, but uh, we'll see. I don't think I I'll win that battle. Maybe I can convince Mister Dochi to keep having. Five plus zero. That's the last frontier. You actually have a pull to watch Mr. Dutchy? I thought that he was on. In, you couldn't influence him. He just uh, well, he proves himself of being a dictatorial, right? Yeah, but back in the day when I had something to say, I insisted on five zero and the wow. format. The format stuck. Yeah, exactly. He, he said that on the podcast. Yeah. yeah, that was funny to hear. You simply have the you have the ear of the dictator. That's something. Yeah. That's power. Grima so. warm tongue. Ah, sorry. I forgot you guys don't get any cultural reference. No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but uh, fair enough. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it rings a bell. Keep, keep going. Uh, <laughs> last time I tried Terminator. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is probably a list now there who enjoyed it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, that was, uh, I mean, Magnus seemed that uh, maybe not peak, but uh, in stretches, extremely impressive, was my, my impression. Yeah, just dominant. And once he's enjoying himself and crushing everybody, yeah, yeah. of course, it makes it much harder because there's no, no pressure on him. Mm -hmm. He's just too good. He didn't complain about the 5 0, just to mm -hmm. just do the time control. Still good at chess. Yeah, yeah. And it was his birthday, we should also acknowledge it was Laurent's birthday the same day, which. Is always a great, great source of humor every yeah. single year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make you make the same joke actually, and the Trent stole your joke at the start of the day. He made yeah. exactly the same joke. Yeah, that's is. how it's been going for years. But you make the same joke, yeah, yeah, yeah. You that's a tradition. Year, I don't even is, think I it's cannot. Funny. Just think no. It. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. It's uh, it's fine. Magnus was wearing the the PSG uh, oh, that's true. shirt, uh, which was. Uh, I thought it was a good joke. Yeah. Uh, it was fun. Uh, so, how did yeah. you celebrate your birthday? Were you sick already, or did you did you have a chance to? Yeah, no, I, I was with my daughter, so I mean, very, very, very something very, very modest. Uh, it was, it was nice. It was nice. Uh, and uh, I can't yeah. mock you if you bring family into it. It's very unfair. <laughs> that sounds nice. Yeah, uh, no, but I'm not too happy to get uh, older. But yeah. Uh, that's how it is. Uh, yeah, I was with you guys last year. Really? You remember we were together? I don't remember what day it was. Match, I know we were partying. Must have been during Thailand, but it could have been any day. <laughs> ah, it was during the match. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, it was during the match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to yeah. cover all okay. the prestigious chess tournaments the world has to offer. The Tata Steel India Rapid Blitz. I I didn't follow, so tell me all about it. Well, it was too early in the day for you, right? I mean, it was a bit confusing, but... Uh, I guess so. My schedule is messed up, as usual. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't follow too much either, because I simply forgot about it, because it was the start of the day. Um, but um, I think Sarin, again, proved, uh, at least in Rapid, that he is uh, a strong entity, too, right? I mean, he did it very impressively, as far as I remember. Yeah, he did very impressive, and... Uh... I mean, one of the so it was many many uh, young uh, mm -hmm. Indians uh, player like Pagadanda, Gukesh, Gaizi, uh, so Sarin won the event. Uh, also, Vidit was there, and some some also some youngster as uh, Abdul Satov and Max Udlu. And uh, I was surprised to see uh, Westley doing very poorly, and uh, uh, Naka also not. Not as poorly as Wesley, but not not winning anything. 
even in the blitz, he, he came uh, uh, second, and also Shakyao, Shakyao Mamedao was playing. So yeah, uh, good good work by I mean like uh, excellent performance by Sain won the, the rapid, and uh, Egezi won uh, the blitz uh, event. So yeah, the, the Indians prodigy are, are are there. I mean they are just uh, they keep repeating uh, good performance. Do you think Vidit is annoyed? Vidit is still higher rated than most of these kids at least. No one ever talks about Vidit anymore when he's one of the the OGs of Indian chess, and then all these kids come in. It did knock me out of the of the Mr. Dutty 2.0 tournament. I mean, he's a strong. I know it was a it was a tough match. That was his his yeah. downfall when he he didn't dominate that match. I'm a bit curious about that. Well, this is a rapid blitz, but it's not online over the board. It almost seems like we correlate less. That somehow rapid and blitz, we care more about if it's uh, some kind of uh, Carlson tour or online event. While rap, uh, sort of uh, this tournament. We seem to have barely noticed. I don't know if it's just me imagining things or there is some truth in that. For me, there's really a big difference, not so much in online or over the board, but if I'm paid to do commentary or not. That really changes my attention levels greatly on these events. Fair enough. No, so it's in the morning. It was in the morning, so I didn't follow it live at all. Uh, okay, the only the main thing I noticed is that uh, Ali Reza became uh, world number one in Blitz. Oh, congratulations! Was, uh, Naka, yeah. <laughs> Naka, Naka, Naka well, was uh, world number one, but uh, he lost like twenty points or something. So I think Ali Reza is world number one with twenty nine something. So yeah, that's the main thing I, I noticed. I think Jan actually makes a good point. If we are not paid professionally to watch the events, we don't. Magnus was not playing, so I was not paying attention, and you were not commenting, so you didn't pay attention either. We actually don't do chess as a hobby. It's basically... I think that's been established at this point. It's also why this podcast is so successful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> our heart's really <laughs> in it. <laughs> With Laurent, you never know, but uh, no, it was early in the morning. I think he clicks through the games later. No, I'm actually, I'm, I'm checking there candidates. Yeah, so am I. I. I just didn't notice it. I don't know. Maybe their PR blitz is slightly different than Mr. Dutch's and they are more aimed at the uh, Indian audience, for instance. I, I didn't notice so much in my feed, simply that it actually took me a couple of days before I understood what was going on. Yeah. While Dodgy, you are noticing. I mean, Dodgy, you're not, you, you can't miss, basically. You, you can't miss. And actually, I was following the, the Dodgy Invitational a great deal. I was, I was uh, listening at you guys. I mean, not all the time. Uh, but uh, I, I was following some matches, especially this Carson Shevchenko. I mean, I thought I, w I won't follow too much, and then I uh, I kept watching because it was very interesting. With the online events, you can easily uh, spread them out. I mean, they didn't play all the games at the same time. While in a physical event, you more or less have to do it at the same time, right? So the online events has some pluses in that way, in terms of media media things. I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. Or it no. might have just have been the time of the day. Yeah, yeah. Or no Magnus, or general ignorance. I guess the Americans didn't do so well. Nakamura mentioned jet lag. I'm not sure if they didn't have time to go some days before. But it's a thing, especially if people get get a little older. Like jet lag normally kicks in the worst for me at least in days four and five. Like it can keep you down. Yeah, also, I mean, traveling that way is normally when jet lag is the worst, and they actually, from the States to India, it's a serious amount of hours, right? I mean, it could actually be very difficult. Could very well be. I mean, Barry's Pollets was jet lag for the FIDE election. You saw how, what happened, right? I mean, uh, Barry's Pollets, uh, when you arrived, he spent one hour talking to me. I had no votes, <laughs> no, no, no power no. whatsoever. I mean, that was yeah, that's, not. <laughs> was unprofessional. <laughs> but he was very friendly and a yeah. nice guy. So uh, we, we, had a, we had a nice talk. But by the way, I mean, like, less attention. Maybe I, w I would have, I didn't even check the games, but, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot to check with uh, with the soccer World Cup. I mean, I must admit, I'm, I'm really busy with that. And France doing so well. I mean, winning another title soon. You That's actually think so? I mean, so I think Brazil is, it seems better. I, I, I definitely yeah. hope so. And I think there's a, there's a chance, yeah. But I think thanks for bringing up the subject here for me and Jan, because, uh, well, Denmark and Germany had... Yeah. Uh, both. I didn't follow. How's Germany doing? <laughs> yeah, good, good, good one. <laughs> <laughs> You're serious? No? <laughs> you so, I, I, are you watching the, the games, uh, Jan, or not at all? At least the German, the German games, no? Not at yeah. all? 
No watching, but of course, it's all over the media, the politics, not just the results. Now we have the usual trainer debate if we should kick out everybody. And yeah, their gesture to you should. <clears throat> hold their hand in front of their mouth didn't seem to do very well either internally or internationally. It's yeah, seemed a bit of virtue signaling. If you, if you go there and don't want to make a stand, it's fine. But then this gesture, then at least focus on football, like it really backfired. When they kicked out, but other than that, yeah, I haven't followed. I'm no. just reading newspapers. D- Denmark was strange. I mean, well, we all expected they would beat Australia. They were not even close, but also for the last half an hour. I mean, you would expect them to panic and sort of go crazy, but they all, if anything, they seemed sorry, very relaxed. It was, it was a very strange experience, actually. So Denmark, it was kind of shock. And uh, I mean, we basically. Well, Australia is a football powerhouse. No? They have a player from St. Pauli in the second German league. So they should be pretty good. No, but that, that was the point, the point they made that, uh, the, well, the most prominent team, uh, one of the Danish players is playing, is, is Barcelona, while the most prominent team um, from an Australian player is FC Copenhagen, right? So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. And that was uh, basically, embar- well, it, it seemed embarrassing, but they were basically the better team. So there was nothing wrong with it. And we saw Australia doing well in the, well, they, they, they got kicked out, but they put up a pretty decent resistance in the, uh, in the next knockout games. But uh, no, it was extremely underwhelming and uh, very, very far from what was expected here. So that was a bit... Uh I'm, I'm so confident that I didn't even brag about... And I, I don't feel... I'm not going to brag about fans that... No, but that's the, what annoys me. That for you... It, it, that's just, you know, like... Uh, Routine, yeah, it's like uh, Magnus beating Sevian, you know, like, uh, you know. It, it's just... Yeah, it feels so normal for you yeah. that France wins that it's extremely annoying. I mean, no, I am officially rooting for England yeah. against you, I, I, so we'll see. Yeah, that I like. That I even, yeah, that I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah, you, Trent, all the, <laughs> yeah, okay, all Trent, the good of guys <laughs> rooting for England. That's excellent. Feels really, really brilliant. Jan, um, you are rooting for France? You don't want me... Too happy, yeah? No, this has nothing to do with with you. Like, I'm not the biggest patriot, but I'm patriotic enough to root against France. In, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, also, I mean, in the world championship. actually, I have seen France win the world championship in football together with Laurent. At a, well, now we go back to training camps, right? But that was basically how the training camp for which match? Caruana started, right? Uh, that was upsetting. He was so happy after they cheated in the last seven minutes winning on time. <laughs> no, but okay. I mean... Let's talk to people uh, what you were singing after after the game. Uh, we bribed the referee, we got a penalty, uh, <laughs> we won the World Cup, uh, and so on. I mean, that was that was just amazing. No, but you were so happy, and it seems so natural for you that uh, I started rooting massively for Croatia, but it didn't help anything. No, but now, now you know, uh, Jan, that uh, France were not rooting against Germans anymore. Wow, we're that's the Belgium. ultimate disrespect. Not even <laughs> rooting against anymore. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, I, Be- Belgium. They were so annoying. They are complaining all the time, and like because we beat them like four years ago in semi final, and they say it was unfair because they had the ball more, yeah, more yeah. often than us. Hmm. But uh, yeah, that was ridiculous. But it's okay, uh, whatever. We'll see. It will be exciting yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, tune in, uh, 8 p.m. France versus England. I know, I know mm. the result. All I know. right. I know Mbappé. Mbappé will score two goals so minimum. After covering our private lives in the half hour expert football analysis segment, um, stay tuned next week when Laurent will explain why Giroud is better than Benzema. Um, <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying. Fascinately. <laughs> what else is happening in the world of chess? The women's candidates, women's candidates. Is in full swing. Peter, any any Russian participants? What's going on there? There is a free <laughs> Russian participants, exactly. So I have been very active on Twitter and following it because, you know, I have to... Well, when the event started, I have to remind people of uh, how it is done politically. So I have been... But I've also been following the chess games, actually. And... Um, I mean, no, it's going to sound wrong, but um, it is really a compliment. Chess, female chess matches has become a little bit more boring because they started playing uh, good openings and less combative openings. You would see more Berlins, for instance. I mean, uh, some of the, I mean, uh, you will see quite some theoretical discussions with solidity 
uh, that you, I didn't see so much before. So uh, I think that the chess has been quite uh, high level. Um, uh, the Goryashkina beat uh, Kostenyuk two and a half, one and a half. Um, she was close to winning, I think, one game with uh, the black pieces, but uh, Kostenyuk defended well. But then I think the second game with the black pieces, she won, if I was not She sure. won a game with black, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think they were both uh, quite interesting Berlins. And um, no, Kostenyuk is a tough opponent. I mean, Kostenyuk was, of course, well, the world champion long ago, then very strong, then she had a considerable down period, but uh, then managed to fight her way uh, all, all the way back to the top. But of course, uh, fighting the young, uh, new generation with Goryachkina seemed uh, not fully capable of this time, but it was quite an interesting match. And uh, the second match is uh, was uh, Lakno from, from Russia, former Ukrainian, against uh, Tan Shangoy. Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. Your, your pronunciation is much better than mine. Um, and uh, this was uh, also a pretty close match. All four games was drawn. Um I noticed that uh, in game three, um, uh, Tan surprised by playing the dragon, which uh, Lakno said took her completely by surprise. So that was basically, they were keeping um, things under control. But then the, at a four game rapid playoff match where Tan started winning the first game and Lakno was trying hard to come back, but never did. And was three draws there. So, I mean, a, a very tough uh, and, and quite high level match. I thought it was it's quite interesting. So now the situation is basically that uh, Goryashkina is back and has uh, and free Chinese, but we have to remember the system because somehow it's not parallel. That this is the group B of the candidates. So basically, she is facing Tan uh, here, and she has to beat her. And if she beats her, she gets to play uh, Lai Ching Li. Lai Ching Zhe, uh, I'm team Lai Ching Zhe all the way. And if she wins that, then she gets to play Yu Wen Jun. So basically, it's sort of the reverse of the. I mean a Western challenger trying to become the world champion in chess, that he had to beat a number of Russian players. Here, the Russian players has to play free, play, beat three Chinese players in a row to become the world champion. And also, it's perhaps a bit noteworthy that in both the world championships, we only have Russian and Chinese players left at the moment. Oh, that's a, a witty observation. Thank, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> this is what happens in the you know, awkward minds of uh, yeah, real chess players. You're calling yourself a real chess <laughs> No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Ment- mentally. I uh, know that went wrong. Anyway, um, but uh, yeah, I- I'm desperately trying not to talk about chess politics, so I'm rambling, so maybe you'll say something. Yeah. Oof. No, we'll, you, I we'll ho- we hope we will be desperate <laughs> till the end of the show, but... <laughs> uh, we still have we still have a, a segment just for you later. Thanks. But the next segment, uh, like, did Peter edit this sheet? It sounds very boring. Like Stratego AI, yeah. new Deep Mind release, ICCF. Yeah. Nothing, nothing exciting happened. Yeah, this track. This, I mean, Deep Mind came out with a new paper. I mean, Deep Mind. Well, first they did, of course. Uh, what is it called? Alpha Go, which was uh, a program that uh, beat the best uh, Go player in the world, which was a huge landmark for AI because uh, basically Go was seen as impossible to to sort of attack from a computer angle and then manage that. Then the next project was that they were, I mean, uh, doing, well, Alpha Zero, Alpha, who, who could play Shogi, who could play Go, who could play chess and did us an incredibly high level. Then they started playing random, well, they also did some, Alpha Star, where they played StarCraft, and of course they did Alpha Fold, which is uh, actually some important stuff that has with science, so let's skip about that, because, well, we know up nothing. But now they did something new in the game sector, that they created something called Deep Nash that can play Stratego. And the big difference with Stratego, compared to the other games I mentioned before, is that Stratego has a lot of hidden uh, information. I mean, in chess or in Go or in Shogi, you know where the pieces are, where in Stratego... The point is you have 40 pieces, but your opponent cannot see what they are unless until they engage in combat. You have never played Stratego, any of you. Sounds like, what do you call this? Like the sinking ships game? <laughs> to some extent, but much more complicated. I'm, I'm raining I'm ah. quick champion. That- okay, uh, well... <laughs> respect. I have actually thank also... You, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Ah, okay, okay. Then I see, I, I see, but I... I Ah, okay. Let me see the translation. Maybe. So basically, the idea is you have to take the opponent's flag, but you don't know where it is. But then you also have some b- bombs that yeah, okay. you you know if you go on the bomb, you die. Unless you have a miner who will can only who can take the bomb, but it's much weaker than the other one. Ah. So basically, they are moving around like uh, you know 
chess pieces, well, like a king, they can go back and forth one square, but you don't know what it is un unless you engage in combat, then you know what that piece is worth. But uh, what, what it is... That's the game I'm playing. It's called Battleship. Is it? Maybe maybe it's just a similar game, but it sounds very similar. Okay, okay. Very, yeah. very similar. Anyway, I'd crash Alpha Zero. And then, I don't think so, because, well, it's not Alpha Zero. It's called Deep Nash. It's named after John Nash, the, the Nobel Prize winner, who would... Um, yeah, yeah, Beautiful Mind. <laughs> exactly. He made there's the Beautiful Mind movie about it. He also met with Magnus and died a few days later. Well, no, nothing. Well, just uh, I don't know why I mentioned that, but that's actually what happened. Um, and um, well, the basic idea is that you need to have mixed strategy because uh, well, you need to bluff at times. So you have to put your pieces in you know uh, in in not the same position all the time. And there's a lot of unknown information. So basically it's capable of bluffing. And that you saw, they published uh, four uh, Stratego games. You can go and look online with commentaries and you can see that. Uh, but what's the big difference to poker? Because poker bots have been good for a while yeah, and that's exactly. also incomplete information. You just have a range of moves, and sometimes you you have it, sometimes you don't. Sounds very simple. I think that uh, the mathematical implications of this game is uh, is much bigger. They they sort of did it uh, well, you know, a zero, what a one with zeros after, and maybe chess has uh, 120 zeros. Go has 300 zeros, and this one has like uh, five to 600 zeros after. It's in, in mathematical complexity, and uh, well, they were showing the games. They said that on some some server, it became the third highest rated ever and was playing quite well. But it was important to understand that the same algorithms they use for chess and go and the shogi didn't work for this or they worked badly. So they had to invent some new ones. So, I mean, they're doing, I mean, a lot of uh, important research. They have done huge breakthroughs in, in science, but they're doing these game, game things as sort of a petri dish for, for studying. And uh, I found it extremely uh, interesting. I was uh, looking at uh, online Stratego games and uh, for, for for some hours uh, at that point. And uh, well, yeah, that's what I do. But uh, I thought it was very exciting. And there is, uh, well, just uh, I mean, basically Google Stratego DeepMind. You will find the articles. It's uh, I think it's fascinating. And, uh, and some other nerds did find it fascinating as well. But Jan started eating, so he's probably can't care less. No, no, I'm listening no. attentively. Huh. Okay, fair enough. I you, found something on my what desk. What are you doing? This sunglasses. Yeah. And then you also asked asked to update me on my correspondence, Jess, if I did hear, heard you correctly, right? No, I think uh, Jan should update us on on something else. Ah. I thought something else was on your desk. Another, another. We have another sponsoring partner. No, I'm not sure. No. This is already an awkward segue. Um, but <laughs> you are, of course, right, Lomo. Before we get balls deep into Peter's very boring hobbies, we should mention <laughs> yeah. that support for the Chicken Chess Club podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. You can also use it for above-the-waist, something I discovered recently. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, the Performance Package. It's the one I have. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code CHICKENS. That's CHICKENS with an S at manscaped.com. Now, Laurent, I had, a, I had a big trip this morning. I took a shower. Then I remembered something's off. I, I did, did a little shaving. I used the balls deodorant and I felt refreshed. Good to go. What's uh, what's your stake? I also so I did my second time actually the first time I told you it was many years ago it was incredibly painful I must uh, I that must was admit. not but with Manscaped of course with, your your old experience that was not with Manscaped that was with Wax at a stable I went to some shop in Paris where uh, because I was afraid that I couldn't <laughs> one of these famous French ball barber shops you went to <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, actually, you can you can you can go there, and it's normal. It's normal in France, but it's it's not normal in Germany. I wouldn't know. Like waxing, I guess, is normal. I've never been. We have waxing places, but I haven't heard yeah. of people doing that. Yeah. So I went there. It was incredibly painful, very bad experience. I never returned. But this time, I did it with Manscaped, and I must admit, it was very smooth. So I am. Um, this uh, this is this, it was very nice, not painful at all. 
just like a normal uh, shaving. So yeah, uh, all great. I'm very happy about Manscaped. It does feel good, doesn't it? Like the the lawnmower 4.0. I'm <laughs> I'm honestly a fan. Like it's <clears throat> yeah. very smooth, and you you feel better. So check it out. Peter is not gonna weigh in on the topic yet, but there is, I'm sure, a lot of weight to lose for Peter in that department as well. So <laughs> we'll we'll keep you posted. In the meantime, join us, get 20% off and free shipping with the code chickens at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped with a D.com. Insert code chickens. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. There you go. As we've covered off the air before, most of my, most things I do are to look good naked. The last frontier for me is, <clears throat> is gonna be to, to get a slightly less white complexity, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not there yet <laughs> with. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not around too, too often these days, so I'm not white shaming you. Some other people do? No, no, not yet, but it's... I'm the, I'm the meanest of your friends. Oh, yeah. Magnus also white-shamed me. There's a lot of white-shaming. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. silly. Yeah, he's mean as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have looked incredibly confident of, of reason, but still white. Uh, so, I mean, not, not pale. What's next? I don't know. It looks like we're in Peter's hands here. Now, let's skip ICCF. All the games will be drawn. Oh, no, Peter's winning, he thinks. Exciting. Against the non-engine boy. No, no, no. I mean, I'm definitely winning both the games against the non-engine boy, but that uh, is expected that I don't count. But I think I'm winning in one of the other games. But then I'm starting to worry. Maybe he's not using an engine either. I should try to have beaten him 2-0. The other game is going towards a complete draw. But I think he's playing a lot of engines moves, but maybe a much older engine. I haven't figured out which one yet. But uh, I mean, he basically replies after 20 minutes with some kind of engine-ish move, but um, I don't know. So your Stockfish 15 on three days is stronger than his Stockfish 3 on 20 minutes. That is my, no, my impression is he's using some kind of uh, pretty old engine uh, and that uh, it seems like it's not going to work. Uh, I'm, you know, I think I'm winning the, the, the one, but the other one I'm drawing and then uh, I have one game I'm slightly better and the rest is, is drawing. So, well, we can stop here if you want. Or, well, that's also... Yeah, a lot of yeah. No, as long as long as you as you are beating the, the guy without computer, I think so. Without a decent computer, and that you are doing the rest with computers, it's not interesting. No, but uh, I'm beating. I think I'm beating one guy who is also using computer to some extent, and I'm trying to figure out what he's actually doing. But uh, we'll see. So, but um, yeah, that's more or less it. We can skip it from from now. But uh, I'm very excited that I'm winning and I'm spending a lot of time on it. But uh, uh, we'll see. Maybe we should start a game, Peter, against listeners. Yeah, that'll you be You can some... make one move every week, then let your high-powered engines run, and then it's going to be a Berlin draw on episode 63 or something. Yeah, could be a bit bit quicker, but uh, you, you are right. I think, uh, well, I'm having an, an interesting discussion with one of our listeners, but he's also playing me in correspondence. And, well, the nice thing with correspondence is that you have a sort of small chat window. So when you make a move, you can also... You know, have a conversation going, and we're basically all right. Give us, give us your first move. Well, I've forgotten by next week, so this won't go. No, that will, that will be play? that will be illegal. And also, remember, we're playing chess nine sixty. Now we, I don't want to play chess nine sixty. But you're not, a, you're not allowed. I just want to play a correspondence game of against course. listeners. Yeah. Ah, like this. Ah, but I, will, I'm an e four player, and when I'm, you know, when I want to be tough. <laughs> and you have a computer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, ah, damn it! I'm afraid I'm. Yeah, no. I, uh, of course. I actually regret I did, didn't play much more E4 in my career. That's your biggest regret? No. My biggest regret is I was too much a chicken, to be honest. Yeah, it's also my biggest problem. Like, I was still good in openings for my level, even just being a D4 or a C4 player. But I do agree, especially nowadays. But even back then, it would have improved probably results, but certainly chess culture and understanding to start playing E4 a little more at a younger age. I was always, I never caught up with open Sicilians and I always thought it, that's w where you have to go. Um, and I didn't want to go Bishop B5 systems in the old days, which have become more serious now. But yeah, that's what uh, what held me back and I regret it a little bit. 
It would have been interesting to try to see if you could figure it out or something like this. I just, uh, I mean, Laurent, you're a one e four player. When you were a kid, you played one e four, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, always, always. I started to play one d four when I started when I was twenty five, actually, because I started working with Kamnik and. Oh. He was playing 1d4 for two years, so, I mean, all day long I was looking at 1d4 position. It was a bit weird to go to, go to my game and play 1e4, so after one year I just stopped. And I, <laughs> so as usual, you just cashed in on the prep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this idea of using... <laughs> yeah, that's just to upset Peter. But okay, it's normal. Uh, I mean, okay, I mean, that was the point as well to, of, the, of the work, that I could use it for myself. I mean, I was young and... Ambitious uh, player. I mean, that was a deal. Okay. Fair enough. So that I could use uh, the prep. So I started D4 because I was looking at it um, all day long. I don't know if he would change, but you have a good point that this, actually, I never scored uh, heavily in this uh, Open Sicilian as white. And that's why I was not a good one E4 player, I think. So that was a good change, actually. Maybe if I would get something, uh, it's just not to start D4. 1d4 uh, before because I was never scoring heavily in uh, in uh, open Sicilian and if you don't score I mean everybody is playing Sicilian so okay I beat I beat Peter yeah, yeah. 20 moves in Bundesliga in 2002 but that doesn't count uh, I mean catching him in some prep but yeah that was uh, never my my forte but it's a good I mean it's a good question I will because you are both wondering. Uh, you are both, both wondering of what you what, what's your main regret in chess, and actually I, I never. But you don't have regrets. Uh, That's what makes <laughs> you so annoying. Yeah, I mean my main regret is that the French team never won anything big, you know. And I feel and I feel that we we got so many chances, so many opportunities that out of you know some statistics, like every time we have 10, 20 percent, I think we should uh, on average we should have won one big competition. Uh, so that feels unfair. But these numbers always feel inflated when you tell the story. Okay, all we had to do is beat Russia last round, and okay, yeah. we lost three and a half, so you got very close. Like <coughs> no, 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 we lost know, two and a half just, last just time. Teasing. No, I mean it's always two and a half matches, and it's uh, okay. But even if we have like, if you consider against Russia, we have twenty percent. I don't. I mean, we, we had five or six matches like that. So I mean, at the end of the day, you should win one. But twenty percent is your number. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, I, yeah. I understand your point. And yeah, you did get very close very often. Ah, it's my number here. Yeah. Oh, but actually, I want to praise Lo. I mean, we, I mock Laurent for stealing Kramnik's openings, but I mean, I worked with but the never best. Never for stealing Magnus's openings, because oh. that would be revealing information. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Good, good. But no, what I actually, good point. But what I wanted to say, say is that, well, I was working with Vichy, who was a, a fantastic 1E4 player, and I didn't manage to steal anything because I thought I was not capable of. Uh, following it out, right? I mean, that's something like that you regret. You actually have uh, insights to the best Sicilian player ever, more or less, and you don't try to try it out yourself. I mean, that's not but to make a half serious point, I guess we talked about this def- before, um, I think it's tougher for a D4 player to switch to E4 later in their career than vice versa in particular because of these, yeah. these Sicilians, if you weren't brought up with that very strange to us bond structure, then I think it gets tougher. While making the switch from E4 to D4, you can still choose systems according to your liking, like positional, more aggressive. Yeah, you start with Nimzo generally. I mean, it's what I did. I started with Nimzo, Quincy 2. I was fascinated. Because after Quincy 2, Castle, uh, A3 takes takes. I mean, you have two bishops and the center immediately, which never happens in uh, in one E4. I mean, just uh, so it looks so good at the start. But then, of course, you understand it's not you that simple. You need to get these stupid kingside pieces out. <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that is general. When you are playing one E4, it's never a problem. So you don't realize it's uh, such, a, such a big issue, which uh, it is actually. But at the start, it's... It's, of course, uh, a lot of fun. It's not that complicated. I think you have a good point. Yeah. But I think Jan made also a good point that you will tend to go from E4 to D4 when you are later. And it reminded me of a, of a Larsen joke he wrote about somebody. He said that, well, this guy uh, played the Karo kind of when he was young, which, of course, leaves the night a problem. What are you going to play when you get old? Then, right? I mean, there is sort of a, a tendency that you, yeah. you go in a certain yeah. direction, right? Yeah. Some guys have pulled it off to do the opposite, but not that many. No, Aronian started playing yeah. one e four like four or five years ago, and now he does much That's more than 
then d4, but I'm not sure his results have improved. Kramnik didn't Kramnik really tried to play e4, he wasn't very successful, right? Yeah. No, it was a disaster for yeah. Kramnik, let's face it. I mean, I, I, I started working with him when, I mean, he was telling me that, okay, it doesn't feel the open Sicilian stuff, that one e4 has to, in his opinion, actually, and I think he was he was right, I mean, he knows something about chess, uh, Vladimir. Uh, he, he was saying that you have to start. You have to start very early because uh, this. Uh, and even if you start uh, very early, it's not a guarantee. But for him, it was. He was much better. Let's say he was playing Topalov. He was always much better prepared. But then simply uh, Topalov yeah, was got crushed uh, a lot by Vishy and Topalov, even though he are prepared them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they were. Having a better taste uh, of the positions than uh, than him, and uh, then he decided to to return to the four that it was too late, and to. But it's true. When we were young, I mean, if you played e four, you had to do it hardcore. These days, you know, well, uh, Magnus and others invented bishop b five check, and you could sort of, uh, I mean, well, you could uh, cheat a little bit on the weight, right? Well, that was what you were saying. But but uh, well, you mentioned bishop b five before in this conversation. I yeah, I would also dispute that Magnus invented it. I understand. But yeah, it's uh, it's become a, a serious weapon which looks much friendlier to D4 players' eyes. No, you get all these Marozzi's or C3, D4 center positions. Those weren't really a big, big thing 25 years ago. Anyway, life is very tough. Mm -hmm. But what would your advice to young players be? Play all the moves, start with E4. Experiment. Start with E4. Start with E4. For sure. I started with d4 and I was always crashing all these other kids because I was just winning and all the queens gambled immediately. Yeah, but it's not good for now e4 you start with e4 Spanish, open Sicilians. You see many, many positions and then of course you can start to play d4, but yeah, first e4, yeah, it's the most, most direct move, yeah? You can just, you are just going, I mean, it's more log most logical, most direct, most uh, interesting, I would say. You see, most I mean, you see many different kind of positions. Um, it just for me, I mean, it's completely obvious that you have to start with one e4. But of course, it depends on the kids. But in general, I saw my four-year-old kid play chess with his granddad for the first time, and he, my kid, wanted to start with one d4, and I was very proud. Nice. Then the, the granddad said, "No, no, you have to play e4." Then he tried, maybe can I play knight f3 instead? I said, "Okay, the guy understands transpositions, but uh, I like your kit. Uh, put the pieces on protected squares. <laughs> exactly, uh, e4 yeah. bonus. Uh, it's not but he was basically forced to play e4, and they played on. But can you what? Can you stand watching your kids play chess? I don't care about the result, but when they weaken some kind of color complex, I feel physically annoyed. Basically, my kids aren't big chess players. The one thing I Mind feel neither. is tricky. <laughs> Normally, I'm fine letting them win at stuff, but at chess, it sort of undermines oh, really? the authority too much to let them win in chess. Um, so I'm not sure. But yeah, they're not that interested. No. Yeah, me, me too. I mean, they went to the club for six months, but they didn't like it. I mean, the, the oldest one, she was taking like 20 to 25 minutes to play one move, which was a uh, very good focus, but a bit too yeah. long for one game. So at some point... Sounds yeah, like me at the really like it. break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and the youngest, I mean, she, she said like, she played the first tournament and last tournament at five years old. Okay, first game, she, she goes to the guy and say, you know, I'm very good at chess. And uh, okay, so she won the game, but yeah, no. Uh, they were not uh, really, uh, they stopped very quickly and uh, this is what they want. It's also a thing, of course, about us self-hating chess players. Most that we know, we don't really, at the very least, we don't push our kids into yeah, exactly. chess. No, like you will yeah. tolerate it and support and so on, but we're not really, <laughs> really pushy towards that direction. Yeah, that's basically, I've decided, I'm, I'm not going to stop it. I mean, if you, well, you know, I don't really tell his granddad that, okay, please don't play chess with the kid, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's a bit too much. Yeah. No, exactly. I mean, like, not not pushing yeah. it, but l l let mm -hmm. them decide. I mean, I was lucky to that I could decide for myself. Yeah. Uh, as a kid, my parents didn't uh, push me or prevent me from doing anything. Yes, same here. So that was that, that was cool, and uh, I'm just trying to do the same with my. my oh, kids. Th this this year, my kid is not going to to chess in schools, but uh, last year he was going there. I think once or twice a week, and I would basically bring him there and. Uh, while he's going and getting a lesson, I'll sit outside and tweet or something like that. But I would bring him to the chess club, but not really <laughs> involve myself in it. So 
<laughs> Sounds like uh, good parenting as well. Yeah, thanks. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that was one of my better, I would say. So, yeah. IOC has recommended to ban Russian athletes yeah. from events on February 26th. Eight, here eight. is a picture of a Russian chess player at a tournament. Oh. Uh, sorry, my kid is done with his chess lesson. <laughs> yeah. Come back for more about war criminals tomorrow. Having said that, Peter, you've drawn some criticism on yeah. Facebook of all places where... Michal Kobalia, former second to uh, Kasparov, and I, I'm not sure about his shop title. He's the he works for the Russian Chess Federation. As I think, I think he's sure, yeah. a youth team coach or something like this. He's a head coach of Russian junior team. Russian and chess he was Federation. until recently the head of the FIDE Trainers Commission, and of course he's also a strong grandmaster himself. Yeah, yeah very strong grandmaster. Mm -hmm. He's been around, always a solid 26 plus plus player. Yeah, I, yeah. And of course, if if this was me, I would say, okay, we're not talking about that. But Peter is saying this uh, long post that Kubalia wrote is actually highlighting his best sites. So we can just go through it Perfect. one by one. Michael Kubalia, yesterday, that is Sunday, the 4th of December, posted. I'm reading the English translation here. Danish Grandmaster Peter Hanen Nielsen, coach of world champion Magnus Carlsen, gave birth to another batch of critical posts on Twitter on my favorite political topic, Russia and everything related to it, etc. To not for the first time, he mentioned me and my student Volodar Morzin. I will speak about his about this character in more detail. During my chess career, I don't remember him being politically active, rather even the contrary, nothing prevented him from playing the World Cup in Libya under President Gaddafi, where the path was ordered for the... Ah, this doesn't make sense. The path was closed, I guess, for the representatives of Israel. Yeah, there yeah. was some discussion about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. like Well, I think in uh, there was uh, the Israeli players uh, was not able to play or didn't play in, in Tripoli, and there was some criticism of, of that, no doubt. Somebody... I don't think that many boycotted uh, the event. Well... So, some some did. I played in uh, in Tripoli. That's correct. At that point, uh, well, the European Union had very good uh, connect, uh, sort of uh, connections with with Gaddafi for some reason. So it didn't feel controversial at the time, which it uh, obviously did uh, uh, later. Later, I did I did boycott actually by not qualifying in the European. Uh, yeah, I didn't qualify in the European Championship. That was. A I will also point out that uh, I was actually politically active before. I boycotted the Olympiad in Alista. I don't think anyone noticed, but there was uh, calls for a boycott for, for the Olympiad in Alista, and uh, I was one of those who actually stayed at home. But uh, well, I lost some faith in chess. You also boycotted every Olympiad since 2010. So you're you boycotting Olympiads is less impressive. No, I didn't. Bo I didn't boycott. That was 28. <laughs> I didn't. No, no, he came in 2022. <laughs> That's true. For yeah. three hours, and then he made the tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chennai. Amazing hospitality. I like, had so many great yeah, talks. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. we would do a much better job roasting Peter, by the way, yeah. Mr. Kobalia. Next time, check with us. So, 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 so one question, Peter. So if you start boycotting before, so Elista, I mean, I was not mm -hmm. uh, yet into the, I'm much younger than you, so I was not yet into the mix, uh, Jan, as well. So uh, why you didn't boycott Tripoli? You thought that Kiasan was worse than, well, uh, than uh, Kadhafi? Um, in, in Elista, there was a specific request for us to, to boycott. There was um, something called the Glasnost Defense Foundation, which wrote uh, letters to, to all the players asking them to boycott, not because of the country itself, but because of Kiasan himself. And they were talking about the situation there and giving this example with the recent murder of uh, I think she was called Larissa yeah. Yudina. Uh, I then uh, wrote to the Danish embassy in Moscow and asked them, is the Glasnost uh, Foundation uh, a reliable organization? How should I look at the, at what they told? And the embassy wrote back and said, yes, this is actually someone that we are cooperating with. And, and sadly, what they are telling is most likely true. And they wouldn't give me any advice to play or not. That was up to my own conscience. But they said that this was someone that was very trustworthy. And, well, I was young and idealistic, and I thought to, to boycott uh, so that's why why I did it. 
Okay. By you boycotting an event in Russia and uh, nothing anywhere else will fit in with uh, Kubalia's narrative if we keep going. Yeah, but that's the point. I boycotted uh, Kalmykia, not I mean, not Russia specifically. I mean, uh, yeah, no, but I understand. I mean, like you didn't answer okay. my question, but okay, <laughs> we're not gonna get through that, this. That, <laughs> no, no, please, please, so just just ten seconds. I mean, like, why you think so? So you you had no clues that Gaddafi was kind of. Doing worse things than Kirsten, most likely. Yeah, but it was Kirsten's actual event. He was the one organizing, while Gaddafi was to. I mean, then it's more the the country than him per personally. And uh, at that okay. point, okay, okay, okay. So you answer. Yeah, and at that point, the you. I mean, at that point, Gaddafi was going to Brussels, coming with his tent. There was a lot of talks about uh, cooperation. Yeah, he came yeah. to Paris. It, it seemed reasonable at the time. That was also the Danish government's uh, opinion at the time. And uh, well, that that changed. And uh, with hindsight, I would probably rather not have gone. But at that point, it seemed like a reasonable decision. Okay. And I go on. Okay. All right. <laughs> where were we? Yeah. Like in the World Cup in the USA, um, yeah. where the representatives of Iran have lot. not reached. I think Las Vegas 19, 1999, there was uh, some of the Iranian players who didn't get um, visa and uh, just forfeited the uh, games. I I've been to Vegas too. Guilty. <laughs> I don't remember. Didn't like it. it was, no. <laughs> it was a horrible oh, summer. I loved yeah, it. I can't imagine. <laughs> oh, that's oh. that's, that's amazing. the wrong paradise. Time of my life. <laughs> 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 yeah, good on name of uh, I mean, that's my best place ever. <laughs> I, think I don't it. remember his fight for justice, democracy, etc. Worse, according to the results of the 2011 European Championship in France, he did not qualify for the World Cup yeah. in Khantimansisk. But respective, re I'm not sure if this translation makes sense, I'm just reading out, but respecting exclusively for his own interests, he published an yeah. entire article about the injustice of additional indicators at the French Championship. I think the tiebreak system is what you criticized exactly. back then. I did. Yeah. I also didn't qualify. It was very close and something went wrong, but I didn't manage to wind my way into the World <laughs> no, Cup. No, but you, did, you didn't. In order to get to the next World Cup by any means. Yeah. Well, you didn't on just the, uh, well, you didn't deserve to qualify. You were perhaps, perhaps close. But, well, the point was that they made the biggest uh, mess of the, the tiebreak system ever. They said that in the regulations that they would use uh, uh, performance rating. And then they made some stupid way of performance raising, but removing some results. And um, well, the point is that they didn't understand what the term performance rating means in a mathematical sense. And, well, there was uh, Jeff Sonas and Ken Thompson, and uh, I forgot uh, which country he's from, another famous uh, chess mathematician, really backed me up and says, well, this is not performance rating. But... Um, Well, the problem was everybody else than me understood it, but I understood it in the technically correct way and um, made my decisions based on, on, on that. And, um, well, they completely screwed up. And then FIDE decided to say that, well, we actually give wildcards to those that me and Palik was who really um, had deserved by, uh, well, our you know performance compared to some of the others to, to, to qualify. And they gave us wildcards. I think that was quite reasonable. And uh, yes, I played the World Cup in, in Hunting Mansinsk in 2021. I don't think that's particularly bad. It was, uh, 2021? That's, no, 20, so, that's yeah. You're right, 2011. So. Yeah. It's when you won four rounds. I did very well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got to the fourth round. Uh, lost wow. to Dashimov in a, in a thriller. Amazing. Oh, but it was an exciting match, uh, I would say. So that's, that's true. But yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, well, I, I, I protested. That was... Uh, towards my own interests but uh, I mean well, that's how it, that's why you protest right I mean I thought they, I thought simply they were didn't understand the, uh, the rules I mean one can google my Peter Heine protest but I was completely right I mean I, that yeah. and well I was protesting against Danilov who was the, the chief uh, at that point <clears throat> all right moving on and yes his efforts were not in vain he got to Khanti Mansisk on the quota of the FIDE president Kesa Yumshinov didn't matter that he accidentally turned out to be Russian and the World Cup was held in Russia, right? This is something else. For the first time, closely, I encountered his Russophobic position when he refused to be a jury for the award of the best chess book in 2011. Yeah, actually, that was 2021. He, he made a typo. Ah, okay. Only in 2021? Huh? Yeah, okay. Kobalia That's, was head of the trainer. He followed you on Twitter. No, no. He was uh, head of the trainer's committee. And uh, they basically had... Uh, a jury who should give out prizes for the best uh, book or something like that. And then, uh, well, then Kramnik withdrew because he didn't want to do it. And I said, well, I'm also withdrawing because at that time, you know, they would, um, 
call it the Gazprom Trophy or the Rosenfarm Trophy. And I said, I don't want my name to end up risk uh, being an odd award committee of uh, a Gazprom or Rosatom uh, jury. And, uh, well, it was quite reasonable at that point. Uh, this is 2021. It's a huge story in, uh, in Lithuania that... Uh, uh, Belarus was building uh, a, a very big nuclear power plant uh, 50 kilometers from Vilnius where I live that uh, they claim it had some accidents at some point my kids in the school was getting uh, you know yacht uh, pills in order to if there is an accident there we can protect ourselves I mean it's known that uh, Rosatom and Gazprom is huge geopolitical Russian tools uh, and I think it's quite reasonable to say I actually don't want to be part of uh, the jury in a Gazprom committee. I, I don't see any problem with that. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's not Russophobic. It's against these, uh, I mean, tools used by Putin. Well, we all know what Gazprom has been used for. No. Right? So it's true. But Peter, would you, would you work for Magnus in a tournament sponsored by Gazprom or I, Rosatom? I, I have <laughs> worked for both Vichy and Magnus when they were sponsored by Gazprom, uh, I'm sure. I mean, So I, your, your values don't reach there when it's part of your job? Uh, not to the full. See, Kovalia, yeah, that's how you do this. How hard <laughs> yeah, can it be? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> Vichy, Vichy was in 2008. No, but Kovalia yeah, will make his first good point uh, in like, it's, it's the next sentence you will hear. <laughs> Please, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. No, first good point of Misha. Misha was, I mean, like, he's a, I mean, actually, he was always a friendly guy. Very strong player, but yeah, that time he just screwed up uh, big time. But th that one is good. Mm -hmm. The next one. I've forgotten. Yeah. I'm getting nervous now. And where are we? Ah, here. But in 2022, yeah. he yeah. turned uh, from a coach to a chess politician, having decided to fight. No, no, oh, no, 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 before. Uh, sir. I decided that. Where are we? Uh, whatever happened. Um, so you don't want to be on the jury, whatever Nielsen's arguments, um, blah, blah, blah. I decided yeah. no matter what, chess is not always beneficial for brain activity, so to speak. Excesses yeah. of profession. That was a good point. That's, that's a fair point, no matter who we're talking about. But in 2022, he turned from a coach to a chess politician, having decided to fight alongside Andrei Barspolitz for the Fidel presidency in Chennai elections. Here, Nielsen revealed himself in all his glory actively carrying his Russian-phobic position to the masses. It was available to all Russians, children, people with disabilities, and adults. I also did not stay away from his attacks, as I was a representative of the Russian Chess Federation in the Indian elections. Peter, you just chime in when you want to disagree. I can <laughs> say a lot of uh, stuff here, but well, he's saying generally factually correct things. I don't think I'd change from a, a chess coach to a chess politician, but he's basically summing up the things. And he's also mentioning that he's uh, the Russian Chess Federation uh, delegate, which obviously meant that we were on different teams here. I don't know. Uh, did you skip the part where he's uh, bad-mouthing Boris Polich? No, no, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. Good, good. Okay, go on. I'm not sure if he's bad-mouthing him, I think, but we'll, we'll get there. Uh, of course you became a chess politics. I mean, come on. I, I was running for office for some... So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's... So you are becoming like... It's not I that you it's... don't... You stop being a chess coach, but you are also a chess politician. I would say that uh, I will. I tried to become a chess politician, but uh, I didn't su succeed. Yeah. Uh, well, on a, on a, so if you went back to <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. I, there, um, yeah. I was an unsuc <laughs> unsuccessful chess politician. You could have. Right? I don't know. Yeah, no, that's. <laughs> Let me tell you okay. a little bit about my impressions of the Indian elections. This is Kobali again. I saw the presidential candidate of FIDE, Baris Pulitz, for the first time in my life, which is strange because he's a grandmaster who had a rating of 2,600. As it turned out, he never played in any adult European and world championships in his career, which is quite strange for a chess professional. Personally, I don't know such people. Unicorn, not otherwise. That's a bit extreme, but of course he's right. No one had ever heard of Baris Pulitz until April 2022. And we are still not completely sure that Peter did not Invent. <laughs> Greetings, Andre. Yeah, he does exist, I think. But I think also he played quite some in the United States. He's also played a famous game at the World Juniors against uh, no other than you know, Ludwig Hammer, I think. So, I mean, he has played a little bit. I mean, and also... I okay, think, let's all be honest. Peter, had you heard of him in March 2022? Not really, no. There you go. <laughs> I, I had neither. Laurent? No, of course. Uh, yes, yeah, so, no. I saw him. I I knew the name because I saw he played some some Open in France, which is very sus. Uh, but yeah, I I 
I understand Kobalia's point. I mean, it's completely right that it's very rare to have such cases. I mean, the point is a little silly that he never played European or World Championships. I'm sure you couldn't name many players, but yeah, of course, no. he wasn't. <laughs> uh, uh, at 2,600 Ukrainians, you cannot. I mean, he's the only one, I'm sure. Maybe. I mean, like, okay, maybe another one, but not, not that many. I mean, like... It's generally fair, but I mean, what, what's up? I mean, okay, and so what? I mean, anyway, it's not uh, it's not an accusation, right? He's allowed not to, to focus yeah. on that stuff. And, uh, no, I mean, le- le- let's be fair, Peter. I mean, like, if you would be the, the head of the list, let's say instead of Bayesh Polet, the number yeah. one instead of Bayesh Polet, number two, and Bayesh Polet number two, you would make more votes. I mean, this is Oof, obvious. Not, not obvious I'm, to me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure, but, but thank, thanks, Laurent. I mean, you couldn't make much less, uh, let's face just... it. <laughs> but more, of course you would make more because you have a name. You look... uh, now, I'm almost tempted to run in 2026 just to prove you wrong, but probably not. But uh... No, but you have more credit simply because you are the coach of uh, of Magnus for 10 nah, years. Yeah, people would look at his Twitter. <laughs> no, I mean, they, 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 I think so. No, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> no, of course you would get more votes. You are saying that he's not that famous as a chess player. Well, he was running against Dvorkovic, okay? I mean, Dvorkovic is not a chess player. I mean, it's also a bit strange to say that, you know, he's not uh, hasn't played that much. He's actually a pretty strong player. I've runner. heard about Dvorkovic for, for many years. Yeah, right. and uh, yeah, me so have I. But uh, that's more about... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, actually, I heard from, from Dvorkovic for more than 10 years. Okay. Anyway, it's uh, it's not a popularity context, but yeah, the it actually, point actually is, that we haven't heard much <laughs> about. <clears throat> nah, it's, anyway. Anyway. Fidel was probably waiting for such people, according to the logic of some comrades. Once again, I'm not sure how <laughs> no, this translation is. I don't think so. But the <laughs> election performance of the Burish Polis Nielsen duet overshadowed everything. Now we're talking. <laughs> Out of the 15 minutes provided, <laughs> 10 minutes were personally broadcasted by Peter Heine. That is wrong. Six. Exclusively about his love for Russia, mixing in his speech everything that is possible. Putin, Medvedev. Vorkovic, Gazprom, Ukraine, and others. Everything about the chess itself. Apparently, he mixed up the political stand. I'm not sure. Sh- I don't get this. Don't let his wife's Lavra rest. I don't understand. Ah, something. Something that just because my wife is doing it, I, sh- I don't know. Never mind. I mean, that's, yeah. let's not bring my wife into it. No. With the election of the head of the International Chess Federation. And nothing that he could not even learn his speech, but read it by memorized leaves, forgetting to put on a jacket for basic decency. That we've pointed out on this podcast before. Put on a jacket and a shirt, Peter. Come on. Is that really important? I mean, again... I think it's very important. It's uh, also about appearances and looking professional and you're saying you want to represent the chess world. Wear a jacket and a shirt. (laughs) I mean, again, yeah, you're making the same point as Nigel Short and now Kobalia. I mean, well, can we also talk about... I made this point to you both privately and on air before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, well, I think, uh, yeah, we're talking about war criminals. That's a more important subject, but sure. I will, uh, yeah, retrospectively, I would rather have brought a jacket if that really matters to you guys. But uh, I have worn a jacket on other occasions that uh, where it felt even more correct. So it's not... I mean, it's not that I don't have a jacket. It was a deliberate choice, if you want to know. But uh, Delegates, Peter does have a jacket. <laughs> some of them do, some don't. <laughs> I mean, uh, sure. No, I understand boss position. I mean, to be honest, I mean, like, yeah, okay. I understand it's not that important, but... Yeah, I mean, for me, it's... it's. Uh, I mean, well, Nigel Sean and Kobalia mentioned that, can you wear a jacket? I'll say, sure. I was talking about that... Um, Walkovich is sitting on the board together with Walk Criminals, Peskov, and Choyu. Well, if you would reply to that, I would reply to the jacket thing, and I didn't get a reply. I, I think it's such a small detail. It's something that's extremely important. I don't think they are connected. Like, if you're serious mm-hmm. about it, uh, whatever your message is, you have to try. Most of these people have never seen you before to deliver it. I thought I wore a very nice uh, p- polo shirt that I, I like. I mean... It's my impression that some of the richest and most successful persons in the world that we would like to have a sp- sponsor. Once you're a billionaire, you can wear whatever you want. <laughs> Before that, put on a jacket. No, we want to actually be on wavelength with these billionaires, not the oligarchs, right? I'm trying to shift the chess world. So, I mean, you know, I think that you... Did Zuckerberg ever wear a jacket? No idea. Uh, I mean... I think he was very well known, yeah? To, to go to T-shirt, wherever he was going. But yeah, okay, I don't know. Okay, whatever. I mean, it's not, anyway, it's a bit weak from, from Kobalia, but I mean, the, we should have more content like that. It's very funny. 
I'm not saying it's uh, it's uh, it's that important, but yeah. <laughs> um, no. Very, very nice. I've been to dinners with presidents where I have worn jackets. I actually understand etiquette. I just don't. I'm, it's not obvious to me that a fide congress is necessarily in that level. I think you can also dress in a nice polo shirt, in my opinion. All right. Maybe in Denmark it is customary that the rules of <laughs> etiquette allow you to go out in a sports t shirt for important events such as the fide presidential elections in front of delegates of almost 200 countries of the world. Yeah, as I say, someone else's soul is darkness. Wow, this. But then I was gonna go, but I'm not sure. Where yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, it's a clear. Yeah. I agree. But the bottom is broken. That's for sure. There has never been such a shameful performance by FIDE presidential candidates, and I hope it will never happen. The president of one of the European countries sitting next to me on the list of unfriendly countries, if anything, that could be anybody. <laughs> <laughs> was, there, was just shocked and said every minute that in his career as a businessman he had never seen such a performance such a shameful performance in his life that sounds a bit like Arkady's uh, like Neidich is he, is he a delegate? <laughs> no, it sounds no. like something you would say I I never in my life ever seen such a shameful no but I have to admit that well we made a lot of effort to get to run this election then we get 15 minutes to speak And we said what we felt, but it's clear that there was not a lot of sympathy or, I mean, it was basically, well, you can, if you really want to, you can go to YouTube and find it and watch it. I'm sure you will not. But basically, yeah, we had the right for 15 minutes, so we got to talk. But, uh, well, one or two clapped afterwards, and there was just silent, and then that was it. I mean, uh, it was extremely awkward. In our defense, we, we did coach you on this very podcast for <laughs> weeks and weeks and weeks. You need a positive no, message. I disagree. Just rush no, no. is not going to cut it. I know you disagree, but that's why you don't get applause or votes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but, <laughs> no <laughs> come okay, on. I'm, I'm overdoing it. No, that's... I mean... Yeah, yeah, you're overdoing it here. Okay. Again, that's what the point I made too short. I mean, I could also tell you, you should have... You know, you lost to Kasparov because you played sharp Sicilians. But you would have lost anyway. I mean, we never had a chance, and you, you know it as well. I mean... I, No, no, I mean, we don't. We all know, yeah. Maybe you could get a few more votes, but that's No, it. but it's not so much about winning winning the thing, but about, yeah. Yeah, but I'm... Leaving the appearance. But anyway, I should also state that overall, I was proud of you that you went there wow. and you stood in front of all these people. So yeah. I think overall was positive. Fine. We even. actually said the things we meant, even if we understood that people will find that we were embarrassing. But uh, that's uh, that was the point. So that I'm happy about, even if he, if someone, uh, I don't know who is, thought it was very embarrassing. But. That's that's life. Anyway, go on, or am I? <laughs> are we done? <laughs> no, we should have this every week. Yeah. Uh, going back to Nielsen's latest opuses, let's start with the accusations of manipulation. Oh. But first, a portion of another life from this character. One, Morozin did not play in the Russian Championship in early October because the championship ended on September 21. Sure, that's one okay, day that's wrong. Doesn't sound like such a strong lie. Um, <laughs> no, that's he did not that's, switch. That's incompetence. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> he did not switch to the FIDE flag before the Junior World Cup in Italy <laughs> because the organizers did not demand it, and it was held in October, not November. There's a lot of October stuff. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. October first, yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. Uh, yeah. To get to explain it to the readers, the point with motion is that I made a post where I said that. Um, Well, first he plays on the, the Russian championship under the Russian flag, then to play the world and the European juniors, but apparently only the European juniors. He switches to the FIDE flag because there you're not allowed to play under the Russian flag. And the day after the event finishes, he changes back to the Russian flag. I mean, well, in my opinion, it becomes a joke if you can just sort of, uh, ah, now, okay, this is, now this is sanctioned. So then I, I change the FIDE flag and then you change back immediately. It should be that, well, you change permanently. That's what I was saying, is that FIDE was trying to evade the sanctions. So this is basically the context, and now you can keep roasting me if you want. Sure. I think he's a 15-year-old kid, and he should be left alone. He just plays, I know, whatever flag he has to play in the in the event. But yeah, I know you, yeah, but you disagree. <laughs> yeah, I think you are wrong, because you don't know Mosin, and you don't know that, well, he's a stepdad. He's not 15? He, he is Did 15. he turn 16 in October? Like, no, no, probably. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't checked his birthday. You're right, but 
I mean, well, the Russian Chess Federation is using Mosin to bring him and play. A, but that's the argument you make about every single player that's ever been on any picture. You're saying no. they're being used for propaganda. That argument you can, of course, use for every active Russian player that's successful that they're being used for propaganda. No, I think you are you are wrong. I mean, uh, well, Kobayashi. I can show you like 50 tweets where you're saying they're being used for propaganda of pictures of any Russian chess player that you've met. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, I'm sure you're right. Maybe maybe there will be only 49. My, my point is that, well, the Russian chess Federation, they even made a video, which I have actually posted on, on, uh, on Twitter with translations, uh, so you can see it there, that they had this plan that first... They wanted to break the sanctions with the kids and um, what is it called disabled from them, and then they will move on to the, the national team afterwards. So they they specify that this is a, a particular plan that first they will try to break sanctions via the kids. I mean, it's them who is deliberately using the kids as the first way to to break the sanctions. So I think it's reasonable to to debate, debate that when they have actually mentioned themselves. But then you should criticize as you of course do. The federation, not the not the kit. But I am. I mean, I'm using. The, I'm not criticizing Muslim. I'm using this as an example. Okay. If you are not criticizing Muslim, okay. okay. I'm I am not being critical of Muslim. Yeah. I have seen him on yeah. on fa 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 Facebook. He's a kid who is opening his Christmas calendar. I have nothing against him. He's being used. I'm critical of the Russian Chess Federation of Fide. He's of course, used, I'm not. So. Why would I be critical of a 15 year old kid? He's being used. No, no, that's what I'm saying. That's how it's. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'm not. I mean, no, they are portraying me as I'm at attacking Muslim. No, I'm attacking Fide and I'm at attacking uh, the Russian Chess Federation, of course. I mean. And, and Kobalia. Kobalia as, as well. He's the representative of the Russian Chess Federation. Uh, so it's. Uh, I mean, that's. Yeah. Anyway. But um, any. So let's continue. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good. No, but well, this is important to clarify, I guess. I agree that it would be unreasonable to go after kids, but I'm not doing that. Okay. Come on. Yes, that's what I felt actually. I'm not like very attentive to your to your tweets, yes. even if I read all of them. But I mean, I didn't feel there were any, you know, like. I mean, for me, I understood that Mozin was used by the Russian Feder Chess Federation, and that's it. He's just a kid. I I write it in in huge block 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 letters that so, uh, this is how fe feed it. I mean, he, 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 he will. I, actually, I checked yesterday uh, on Kobalia uh, Facebook. And he's, he's his coach since 2018, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So because I saw a picture of them four years ago. So that mean, it means that he trusts his coach, which is normal, and he, he will do whatever his coach will tell him uh, to do. I mean, and it's very understandable. And it's uh, and they, I'm sure they have an excellent relationship. But then you cannot, of course, you cannot blame the kid because... I, I tried to find uh, the same pictures with Kobalia, but I couldn't find them. Also, it's not so easy. You actually have to go to the Internet ar Archive and find the old pictures when it changed. I was trying to use Kobalia instead. I couldn't find the evidence of what I... Well, you could have not tweeted. Like, you, no. your point has been made in 48 other tweets saying the same thing. <clears throat> no, not, 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 not this one. I'm sorry. No. Either way. Yeah, go on. Following the end of the European Championship in Turkey, FSR... I guess it's the Russian Chess Federation yep. transferred all children back to the feeder flag without violating any of the rules. And I wonder if Nielsen's personal dislike for Russia overshadowed attention to basic details and facts. No, but that's the whole point that I'm critical of that, uh, you know, they play tournaments, the Russian championship with the Russian flag. Then they, because, well, the European Chess Federation has stricter rules on Russian players than FIDE. So then when they go to European uh, Chess Federation, they change the flag, then they change the flag. So what do you want them to do? Well, I want, um, well, either you are on the FIDE flag or on the, I mean, Russian flag. It cannot be that you keep changing all the time, in my opinion. I mean, that's basically, you know, trying to um, sort of play around the rules. You shouldn't. I mean, well, I think... You could argue it's following the rules. <laughs> Yeah, but then you are creating it like, you know, one day you're Russian, the next day you're feeder, then you're back to Russia the other day. I think that's not the, how the spirit should be. It should be that. Well, if you choose to play on the feeder flag, we allow you on your events. But I mean, well, you cannot play on the one flag one day. One flag so you one want day. them to choose to play under FIDE flag and play the Russian championship under the FIDE flag? Then? No, I would rather think that we, well, if we want to allow them to play because they play on the feeder flag, well, then, of course, they shouldn't play the Russian championship because, well, we are allowing them to play as non-Russians temporarily. But, I mean, you can't have it both ways, in my opinion. 
Well, I think it well, you becomes can. you can, but I think that's wrong. Uh, so that's what I'm arguing for. That uh, I mean, then you well, you are, we are trying to avoid this propaganda of Russian chess players being heroes at home and then representing Russia abroad. Well, that's what I try to avoid. But, yeah, but it's it's very I mean it's a very hot topic. Let's okay. say no, it's a very complex uh, topic. We've talked about it a million times here. If we don't want Russian players to play because of nationality and because they're dictator launched a war on Ukraine. I think it's a very complex topic that we've talked about on main levels. But yeah. <laughs> who, who are the Russian players in the Mr. Doji? I mean, it was Dubov and Gitschuk, yeah? There were more. Several. So you cannot say, I mean, they are likable. I mean, like, I mean, for me, it's very, very, very difficult to you understand because we know them personally. I like them both a lot. And I don't feel they are part of any kind of uh, propaganda. Obviously, exactly the opposite, actually. So, yeah, it feels weird just to boycott some tournaments. No, of course, it shouldn't matter who we are friends with, but yeah, it's... <clears throat> Sanctions are not personal. It's, uh, I mean, in that way. I mean, when you choose to block a country's athletes, you cannot say, well, this guy is my friend. We, we don't. I mean, that's why I have thought I, I should, should not play, for instance. But as mentioned, it doesn't stop you from working in events where they're involved. <laughs> yeah, I, I get your point. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Concerning the second propaganda post. Uh -huh. Yes, Peter, as you have already been pointed out, it is low to use and criticize underage children, although this is becoming a disturbing trend in Europe lately. Ooh. And yes, uh, Russian Chess Federation is engaged in propaganda, but unlike you, it's chess propaganda. I'm not sure of the translation. No, I think this is correct. Here. I mean, yeah. it's good. You have the same in French, yeah. so it's good. Relations between the USSR, Russia, and India yeah, have always been friendly and warm. So it's no surprise that despite the exclusion of the Russian national teams from the Chennai Olympics, the FSR decided to command, once again, To invite, to invite. Unfortunately, other, yeah, I guess it's invite. Other young Russian ski chess players could not go and organize a separate cultural and chess program within the Olympics, festival events. And ah, this text makes a little sense. The, the, the English translator is struggling. Festive events at one of Asia's oldest colleges, sessions for the state's best children and for the visually impaired, constant autographs. Simon, yeah. Simon. yeah. Seance, seance in Russian. Ah, okay. Well, Murchin played a symbol in the Russian house uh, in uh, in China, yes. Yeah. Interviews and joint photos, that's a propaganda. Yeah. But you wouldn't understand it. Politics and Russophobia have overshadowed you everything. I guess this is it. Post some, nice picture. some pictures. Some nice picture of the event, actually, with some uh, a lot of Indian kids and uh, Mozin playing on them, uh, Kobalia as well. And yeah, looks very friendly, actually. Like a friendly event so in India. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, well, we can talk about uh, Russian-Indian uh, uh, political relations if you want. I, I disagree with that uh, the Russian Chess Federation is just doing um, chess propaganda, no political propaganda. Well, you can have a look at the, their board. It's uh, filled with uh, politicians, not chess players, unlike... Um, Well, for instance, the Danish Chess Federation or whatever. I mean, so that is just uh, plainly wrong. It's a strong uh, political tool. It's been used for, for a long time. So I disagree. That's well known. So talking about, yeah, that, that was weak from, from Kobalia. It's um, okay. Yeah, but, oh, that's um, a pity because we'll do, I mean, give give us a call, please, uh, Misha, next time. Uh, we know it was, uh, I mean, he beat me, he taught me, uh, he beat me in 98 in World Junior. Yeah, yeah. So he can give me a call and I can, I can help him out with uh, the text. Uh, we'll do a better job. Peter, don't worry. Uh, and by the way, so that's just a uh, good transition to this Filatov. I mean, Kayakin decided to run. Well, Kai I saw that on your Twitter. Yeah, Ka Ka Kayakin decided to run against Filatov, actually. What that's a real about. thing, yeah? Russian chess presidency? Or what, what's that? What's the title there, right? Yeah. Here? Actually, also, yeah. the Russian. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, we call them the Russian Chess Federation. Actually, they have pointed out on Twitter that they are the Chess Federation of Russia. So we should actually use the correct name. Yeah. Um, they they actually tweet tweet. Okay, we don't care. I do uh, because again, I'm not okay. Russophobic as you have. We don't. But um, I mean, there is elections, and uh, the Chechen um, Chess Federation has nominated Kayakin as a opponent to um, to to the reigning uh, president, uh, 
Andrei Filatov. And well, in the beginning, people were a bit puzzled. They thought, uh, ah, this is not really for real and is kayaking actually running? But I think the, the latest uh, tweets and news seems to be that, no, this is very much uh, a competitive election and uh, kayaking is running for, for presidency of uh, the Chess Federation of Russia against uh, Filatov. And, uh, well, you could see there were several uh, sort of what they call regions of Russia um, nominating um, Filatov, including uh, Crimea, for instance. And um, for Kayakin, I think it was only Chechnya. So you're calling Crimea a region of Russia? No, I'm saying that uh, Crimea has uh, nominated um Russian Chess Federation. I was trying to. Uh, yeah, you said several regions of Russia, including Crimea. Just no. Yeah. I mean, that's the the r Russian pers perspective. It's not. I obvious. What, what I think Crimea is is obvious. Uh, so that. Uh, I mean, but um, um, yeah, um, but this is sort of um, the current situation, and I have no idea who is going to win. Uh, to be honest, I'm not really. I don't have that many sources in the that that region. But it's quite interesting that both Kayakin and Filatov has been seen as incredibly pro Kremlin, but you see there is also some internal fights. I think recently you saw there was a, a Russian media who had posted a lot of gossip about the Russian Chess Federation and people thought that it was probably coming from the Kayakin's camp. So there is um, some heavy battles going on there that we don't know about, but there's going to be an election in a couple of weeks. First, I thought it was Kayakin was basically just running to, you know, resign and get some kind of, um, well, post, I mean, cruising the Caribbean, this kind of stuff, uh, but um, probably it seems actually to be for real. So that's a bit, um, it's a bit interesting. Um, I don't know. I cannot really root for any, uh, root for any of them. You cannot, you cannot be more pro-Putin than Kayakin, actually? Probably not, but uh, Filatov is, uh, well, he's a billionaire. I think he's on the Russian Forbes list of billionaires. I forgot if he's in the, uh, which number he is, maybe not in the top 100, but uh, extremely rich. So it's an very interesting uh, fight going on. And uh, maybe being the head of uh, the Russian Chess Federation comes with certain benefits. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, obviously um, hard to judge from outside, but yeah. if yeah. they vote Kayakin after everything he's said and done, in particular over this last half year, as the president of the Russian Federation, that sends a strong message to the rest of the world. And I'm not sure that's the message. No. They they want to send, but yeah, I'm not. Also, I mean, not that into details, but it sounds. Filatov has generally been seen as a hardliner as well, so it's. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know yeah, enough. I'm no. sure he's. That's uh, why it's very weird. I mean, I'm not capable of understanding it simply. Yeah, me too. I mean, like that's incredible. But weird. just for PR, for yeah. someone like me who doesn't follow the internal stuff there that closely, Kayakin, everybody knows in the chess world where he stands, what he stands for what he feels about um, Ukrainian civilian casualties and so on. So that's uh, for the outside perspective would be a stronger message than Filatov, no matter what Filatov might or might. No, Filatov, you will have to go to my Twitter to see again, I'm using uh, small kids that because he's posting pic. Well, he posted picture himself with his kids and, uh, you know, army uniform greeting the the army at the first of, uh, uh, of, of May and, and Moscow and things like this. And he's the president of the of the Russian Federation for for already many years. I think he was a, the, the head of uh, the Kayakin delegation when, when they came when they played the match with mm -hmm. uh, when Sergei played the match against uh, Magnus. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Uh, he's 2016. Been, he's been the so. the team team coach for Russian team quite quite yeah, often. Sure. Maybe he's even won a feed a trainer award as well. You can't rule that out uh, and such. He also has... And that that's sort of half knowledge, but there was a bit common procedure in the old days that some people that came to money, they were told, okay, you take care of this yeah, yeah. sports federation. No, like, <laughs> yes, that oligarchs basically have a, a sports federation each that they have to take care of. Also, well, I mean, he has a wine castle in France, if I, if I remember correctly, right? Who doesn't? That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair <It> enough. <laughs> yeah, let's not get petty here. But uh, so, yeah, stuff going on there. Um, anything else? I, mean, I don't know. This was a very Peter-centric episode. Yeah. Wow, that was amazing. Well, but Laurent, it's our fault. We didn't bring any topics to the table. Like we're we're just sitting here. No, talking. but actually, it's nice. We need one letter like that, criticizing one of us, preferably Peter. Yeah. Peter and sometimes Jan. Yeah, I don't enjoy it as much. Nah. It's uh, sometimes, yeah. For me, yeah, you can go ahead, please, people. Go, go ahead. Uh, you can criticize me. I mean, 
I shouldn't be some weak jokes with baguettes and croissant and I don't know what. Yeah, you forgot to say that now my we should finish on this high note. I, I I'm sure that made your day. I'm, I still think it could be a prank that uh, it was decided by uh, UNESCO that it was World Day of Baguettes. Well aware. On your yeah. birthday. Congratulations. <laughs> once on again. my birthday and on Magnus' birthday as well, I think could be still a prank and that you just uh, my timeline. How do you do it now that you're sick and isolating at home? Where do you get Pamblo from? Do you order? Like, how does it work? Do you have someone to leave it under the door? I can't. I mean, I feel uh, I can go to the bakery and... Uh, he just goes out anyway. Ah, okay, you're not, not not isolating that heavily. No, I go with a mask and that's it, yeah? Fair enough. I mean, okay. We need some camera there on the on the mask, like we need some evidence. I need to survive and get some. <laughs> yeah. Not buying it. Anyway, um, just checking. What do we have? Chicken of the week. Oh, there were so many volunteers in the dodgy tournaments. Hitler wanted to be chicken of the week, really? but... <laughs> He's Russian, so he's out. So it's Giri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. uh, I've actually yeah. forgot to nominate anyone. So, yeah. Giri, we haven't heard from this week. We are basically literally have to invent something, right? Or he chickened out from playing in the Mr. Dodgy invitation. Yeah, but then he was chicken after the week last week for, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, no one ever needs a reason. I will um, nominate Kobalia. I mean, he should write in English. I mean, he speaks uh, good English. Come on. He should write his... Uh, le- I mean, when you criticize someone, I mean, he should be able to understand. So, I mean, why, why to write in Russian? I mean, but we have technology. There. Something might have gotten lost in translation. And maybe it was addressing the Yeah, but the that was audience. bad. But yeah, it's, I agree. The style, if you attack someone, you should write it in. I, I, I mean, I am constantly tweeting uh, Russian news media who says something uh, nice about uh, chess. I mean, Google Translate that. I think he... He doesn't think highly of me. I think he ca- thinks I'm capable of that, actually. But you shouldn't put it on Facebook. Who's Who's been on Facebook in the last five yeah, years? I mean, like, that's yeah, really I'm worrying. It. <laughs> yeah, please. Put, put sure. it on MySpace. At least. So many mistakes. <laughs> So many mistakes, yeah. I, I mean, one thing you haven't noticed, I haven't replied to it. That's extremely out of character. Uh, I'm just trying no, to... No, that's in character. Yeah. You like more if you're... You don't you're have blocked? skin in the game. You like more twi- attacking from a distance, not getting into ah, an infight. Wow. Okay, you have actually made a good read on me then. Maybe you're right. <clears throat> Chicken of the week, Peter Heine for not replying. Exactly, yeah. I don't. Uh, I just use my access to popular podcasts to make fun of it rather than taking a, the, the direct fight. No, but I mean, yeah. No, I understand why you don't answer. I mean, ah, that's also... Two hour later, from Jan and myself, you, you will answer. Yeah, that would be worse, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's going to get too yeah, much yeah. dirtier. It's gonna get <laughs> we, we, we will have 20, 20 pages, 20 gonna pages be, of gonna be, answer. It's going to be legal. You think Laurent doesn't like to do any prep work, but that document here is ready to hit send <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. for years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have some good I stories. I think actually when I once worked for your German team, there were right, some people were writing complaints to me from the to the, some chess press, but did they actually... Was so kind not to to publish it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a- um, no, but we wouldn't use that. I had forgotten. Yeah, yeah. that already. You see, we have better stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and to to hear more more accusations, more breaking chess news. Um, please tune in again next week, Laurent. We will be talking about the speed chess championship because we're covering that so we will know who played whom yeah. <laughs> peter will be playing golf talking about that and probably there will be exciting happenings in the world of feeder as well peter world cup ah world cup allez les bleus ah yeah allez les bleus allez les bleus mm. ah yeah yeah english victory but thanks for being with me there the, the roast see you next week bye 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 see you bye bye